I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have On Yavin, CEO and founder of Cointelligence. On, thank you so much for being on the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Hey, Ashton, thank you very much for uh, having me. It's a pleasure. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into Cointelligence. If you could start off for the audience by just giving a background on what is Cointelligence and what are you providing for cryptocurrency and blockchain? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we started Cointelligence uh, two and a half years ago. Um, when we started, we decided that we would like to have a website with as much data and information uh, for the public uh, for people that are interested to learn about blockchain crypto or advanced people that are already very familiar with blockchain and crypto but uh, need uh, a certain uh, a specific data uh, that uh, might uh, help them to make uh, better decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so we started as a research and analysis company. We actually analyzed more than 400 blockchain and crypto companies uh, out there. Um, and... Um, and by uh, the beginning of 2019, we decided to shift our focus from research to education. And we started Cointelligence Academy. And that's our main uh, uh, business, uh, as they, they call it uh, these days. Mm -hmm. Great. And is this information geared towards people who are absolutely new to learning about cryptocurrencies as well as advanced users that have been in the industry and familiar with it for a few years? Or is it uh, specifically targeted towards a certain demographic? Yeah, uh, great question. So um, it's, it's aimed at both uh, beginners and people that don't know and don't understand anything. Um, and it's also aimed at people that do have the knowledge and experience but they would like to uh, dive in into specific types of uh, data. Mm -hmm. Great. And is there a problem with the news and research in the industry right now and, and a gap that Cointelligence is looking to fill in? Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, it, uh, um, it was the case when we started, especially when it was the ICO craze period and back then, I am sure that I don't need to educate you about that. Uh, but back then, it was the wild, wild west. It was crazy. It still is in specific aspects, in my opinion. But back then, it was really horrible. And until today, we can see that too many players in our industry, unfortunately, uh, even if they're not scammers, uh, even if they're not, I, I mean, there, there are scammers, there are scam enablers, and there are companies that are legit, but even the legit companies, uh, I, I see all the time that they are misleading people, especially with the education part. Mm -hmm. Every platform out there has an education, uh, uh, not, not every, but many of them, they have uh, education sections or all kinds of uh, guides and uh, so on. And when you dive into it, you can see that what they're doing is actually either doing it to promote their own project. And that's completely fine with me, by the way. But what they're doing is sometimes they give false information or inaccurate information because they are not objective. And that's the thing about Cointelligence. That's the thing that we've said to ourselves since the beginning. We set to be as impartial as possible for human, uh, uh, for humans. Uh, obviously, we, 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 you, you can never be 100% impartial when you're a human being, only if you're a computer, an algorithm. But uh, uh, we try to, to, to do it the, the best way possible. Uh, uh, and 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 uh, as impartial as uh, as we can. Mm -hmm. That's great. And on Cointelligence, you have many lists of uh, current and upcoming crypto projects, initial exchange offerings, as well as exchanges themselves. Can you talk a little bit about the ratings you have on these projects? How you came to that objectivity in terms of how you're rating them, and what are your goals behind putting these ratings out for the community? 
Sure. So um, we started uh, with our rating system for ICOs. Um, actually, I have to uh, uh, make sure that it's clear. We did stop rating ICOs a long, long time ago. Um, 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 by by first of uh, by the first of of the first of uh, 2019, we already stopped rating uh, ICOs. Um, and and then we shifted our focus with regards to rating to rate exchanges, crypto exchanges. Um, but to answer your question, when we did rate ICOs, we had a very clear uh, um, method of rating them. We had different categories and each category had different subcategories in that category. Now, what we did is we had uh, raters after a rater finished rating a project it went it was sent to the supervisor after the supervisor made sure that everything was done correctly it was sent to our head of research to uh, uh, do another checkup and only then it would uh, get published and 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 go live um, and and the same procedure with regards to ICOs uh, it, it was happening with exchanges, and it's still happening with exchanges, by the way. We still continue to update the exchanges rating. We do not rate new projects, new exchanges anymore, um, but we keep the uh, rating that we already did uh, to be as updated as possible because things happen, things change. I don't need to tell you. With our industry, things happen every day, and uh, one exchange that was amazing uh, uh, maybe a, a, a month ago might be not so good anymore because they mm -hmm. suffered from hacks or uh, it was discovered that uh, the, one of the co-founders was not uh, legit um, or anything else like that. Uh, even 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 th small things like uh, uh, not, not as big as uh, scams and, and so on, but, but, but just mismanagement, mm -hmm. which isn't really a small thing. It's a big thing for us, but, but it's not as big as uh, being uh, scammy. Um, and um, just to, to, to finish the, the, the answer, um, I'd like to, to add that um, it was very important for us to, to be one of the companies out there that actually does rating mm -hmm. without being paid for the rating. We never accepted rating. We were offered a few times, I should even say many times before, uh, we were uh, uh, um, offered with payments for rating. We were offered uh, with payments for research stories that we published and called out scammers or called out non-legit projects. And obviously, we always uh, said no. Um, and um, and um, that, that's something very important that I would like to to mention because, unfortunately, when we decided to create the system for the rating, we've seen so many rating websites that are accepting bribes in order to improve ratings or remove low ratings and so on and so on. And it actually made innocent investors to invest in projects that they shouldn't have invested in because mm -hmm. of false rating. Yeah, that's very interesting. and. I'm glad that Cointelligence has that level of integrity and objectivity. Uh, it's great to see that in the industry, and it's hard to tell, you know, the context of different sites uh, whether they've been influenced or not, right? And through these rating systems, it seems you've been able to identify a lot of untrustworthy and even scam-like projects. If you could elaborate on the details behind that, um, you know, it's become so prevalent, and it's more just for the safety of investors. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So uh, definitely our first goal was to protect uh, investor, to protect uh, innocent investors, especially mom and pop investors. Uh, I have been an investor myself for over a decade, um, way, way before I got into blockchain and crypto two and a half years ago. And the thing that got me worked up the most is when I saw so many scammers cheating and stealing money from mom and pop innocent investors now don't get me wrong i am not a, 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 a pro a, I'm, I'm not in favor of 
cheating uh, accredited investors or uh, fooling uh, sophisticated investors. Obviously, I don't want anyone to think that. But when it's mom and pop investors, it really pains me because accredited investors and sophisticated investors, that's what they do. They are supposed to know what to invest in and they are supposed to also have more funds and they are able to lose more than the mom and pop investors. When I've seen cases of scams, let me just give you one example. For example, OneCoin. OneCoin is one of the biggest scams out there. And I uh, uh, was in contact with a few victims of OneCoin before we called them out and before we published something about them. And I've heard their stories and I've seen the evidence. I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's complete shock to see these things. Actually, there is one victim that became very famous because she was interviewed to the BBC podcast about one coin scam. And, 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 and when you hear her story, it's, 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 it, it turns you apart because you hear that she didn't lose a lot of her own money, but she made her family and friends to join in this scam. And, and think about how shameful it feels for a person to, to make uh, him or her family and friends lose money. And they lost overall hundreds of thousands of pounds, which is not uh, uh, pocket money. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's an example of something that gets me so worked out. And that's why we uh, uh, have been calling out scammers and continue to call out scammers uh, again and again. We, I think that by now we called out uh, more than 100 scams overall. If we take all the ICOs and the research stories and the scammy exchanges that we've called out, uh, but don't, but but don't. Uh, I'm not sure that it's actually more than 100. It's 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 definitely uh, close to 100. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is uh, very impressive and and very interesting and. I've heard of OneCoin being one of the biggest scams, and I still receive text messages from people in their in their 40s and 50s that aren't even familiar with Bitcoin yet, uh, being being thrown a proposal for for things like OneCoin, and um, it it definitely uh, rings true that with Monpa investors they can be very vulnerable. So I'm glad that you're working uh, towards protecting them. Now, have you and Cointelligence received? backlash for this objectivity and, and calling people out um, because I could feel how there could be tension in uh, calling out people for potential scams, especially when, uh, you know, it's sort of your word versus their word um, and you have to p present the research. So how has that been going for, for Cointelligence? Yeah, great question. Uh, we've been suffering a lot from this backlash. We, we, We've been, first of all, we've been threatened, especially me personally. Uh, we've been threatened uh, um, um, legal threats and death threats. Uh, and when I say legal threats, I'm talking about completely non-based legal threats, because obviously um, we never published anything without clear and obvious evidence. I'm also a, a lawyer by profession. I never practiced law. I never presented clients. Uh, I did it for uh, 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 companies and businesses that I was either uh, uh, either I owned or I was involved in, but I never uh, um, uh, presented the clients. And I know law. So I know what shouldn't be done uh, and what you can do, especially when it comes to this. And obviously, I check myself with other lawyers on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, we did get many threats before, um, and we still do get many threats. Uh, I have to say, not as much as we get as we got when it was the ICO craze, mm -hmm. because back then it was really crazy with the threats, and also with the amount of scammers that we called out. Mm -hmm. But uh, until today, we are uh, uh, being threatened all the time, and uh, there is one case that happened recently that was the most extreme case that happened to us and me personally. And that's the case of LA Token Exchange. LA Token Exchange is one of the most scammy exchanges in our industry. We called them out and we kept calling them out again and again and again 
I think for the last year uh, or so. And um, what happened uh, a few weeks ago when uh, I uh, started asking LA Token uh, uh, official representative at uh, um, one of the Telegram crypto groups, um, which is called Lockdown, London Blockchain Forum Group. And, and I, when I started asking, they, they promoted their uh, meetup in London. They did a meetup in London a couple of weeks ago. And then when they uh, promoted that meetup, I started asking them all kinds of questions like, how do you claim, how can you claim that you sell securities to UK citizens? Mm -hmm. uh, I had a screenshot with an LA token employee approaching me and, and, and soliciting me. And I asked, how can you sell securities? They don't answer the questions. Whenever they uh, are being asked uh, difficult questions, they start uh, attacking back. And what they did in this case, they started publishing all kinds of blog posts with fake stories about coin intelligence and me personally. And what they also did, they started sending emails to many, many people from the industry with a fake story about a complaint, an SEC complaint against me and Cointelligence. And when you get the email with the headline, you actually think that there is a complaint at the SEC, but there's no complaint. When you read the text, you actually find that they are talking about the fact that they are looking for evidence in order to file a complaint. But what they did as well is they actually used names of official people from the SEC in that email to make it look as if it is connected to the SEC. And it's sent from an anonymous email, which doesn't have anything behind it or any organization behind it, even, if, even though they are calling themselves the Digital Transparency Group. But when you look for that group, when you look for that organization, you don't find it anywhere and you don't find any trace of it. So it's all completely fake. And I would say that this is the biggest attack that we suffered until mm -hmm. today. Um, and, and, and just to finish off the story, beside doing everything that I mentioned that they uh, did, they also went into dozens of different Telegram and WhatsApp groups and they published these stories by non-identified profiles to make it look as if different people are posting and sharing these uh, stories and as, as if there is a, really a problem. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That, that is absolutely crazy. And uh, I can't believe that that's happening, but I guess that's the reality of uh, this industry right now um, and that there's always the potential for that. So you know, we're running out of time here, but with all that has happened here, what is your message to the Cointelligence and the general crypto community and, and how can they reach out to you to learn more information or get involved uh, on the good side of Cointelligence? Thank you for asking. So first and foremost, I would say that whenever you are uh, interested in learning, in getting education for blockchain and cryptocurrency, be sure that you are educating yourself from credible sources. Obviously, I will, I will say that Cointelligence Academy is one of the most credible sources out there, but I'm not saying this um, um, in general uh, to uh, uh, promote or to shield Cointelligence. I'm just giving it as an example. Usually when it's a, a, a service provider or any type of a product that is educating you in order to use the services or the product is already a red sign. The second thing that I would say is never, never invest in anything unless you understand it. Mm -hmm. And never, never trust your family and friends to be the ones that can uh, uh, recommend you investment for investments, not because you shouldn't trust your family and friends, because they can be scammed as well. And that's something that we've seen over and over and over again. And the biggest problem in our industry is that we've, we've seen all kinds of high level people and celebrities promoting scams. 
we actually have a, a presentation showing uh, many examples like that. And the last thing that I would say is that anyone can reach us, Cointelligence, and me personally. Anyone can uh, uh, visit our web, uh, uh, website, Cointelligence.com. Anyone can uh, look us up on social media and me personally. And anyone that is interested in asking any question, if it's about scams or potential scams or about blockchain or crypto education, feel free to approach me. We have a program that is completely free. We don't ask any payment for uh, getting the basic 101 education. And I'm inviting everyone to uh, uh, visit uh, cointelligence.com or look us up on any major social media platform. And we're always happy to, to help. Great. Thank you so much, On. It's been a pleasure. I'll leave the link to Cointelligence in the description box below for the viewers. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, and thank you so much for this education. Uh, all the best moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you so much for having me today.